Now we want to define security for an encryption scheme. There are multiple flavors of security. So for today, we will talk about eavesdropper security. In another words, this is called ciphertext only security. First, let us define again an experiment as a probability. So the experiment will be as follows. We are going to generate a key again. So we will use this gen function with the security parameter. We are going to generate this key. But remember, this key is secret, so we are not going to give it to the adversary. What we are going to give to the adversary is that security parameter. So we will let the adversary know the security parameter we are working with. And he is going to give us two messages. Let's call them M0 and M1. And I will allow the adversary to keep some state because it will need this later. Given these messages, we are going to pick a random bit that is either 0 or 1. Why are we going to use this random bit? We will encrypt using the key that we generated one of the messages, the beat message, MB. And this is going to give us some ciphertext C. What we are going to do is we will give this ciphertext back to the adversary. So the adversary now can continue from its state that it left off and in addition it will know the ciphertext that we give it to and eventually it will output some b prime that's his guess he's guessing which message we picked and the adversary wins if at the end this b prime is indeed equal to the b that we chose now, when you think about this probability, you, since this B is just a single bit, you can always find it correctly with 1 over 2 probability. So this is natural. There is nothing interesting going on there. If the adversary wants to actually break this encryption scheme, he needs to do something more. But we don't want him to do much more than, let's say, plus a negligible in the security parameter. Note that for most of the schemes that are used today, the length of the message is not hidden in the ciphertext. Therefore, an extra requirement we have is that this M0 and M1 sent by the adversary must have equal length because otherwise the adversary can easily win this game with probability 1 actually. Now we want that such a negligible function should exist and we didn't define the adversary we will define it as for all probabilistic polynomial time PPT adversaries A we want that there exists a negligible function let's call it neg n in the security parameter such that this probability so the adversary giving us m0 m1 and we encrypting back one of these and giving it to the adversary such that the adversary can guess which message we encrypted this probability should be at most 1 over 2 plus this negligible function we can also define this as a game between a challenger let's say and an adversary when you visualize this probability as a game it will look like this so this challenger needs to generate using the security parameter this key k and it needs to give the adversary this security parameter. 
Then the adversary, we have no idea what it does, but eventually it will give us m0 and m1. Now, since here we are visualizing the adversary as a whole, we don't need to get, get the state and give it back. The adversary can keep it locally. We are going to now pick a bit. So this will be the challenger's bit. And then the challenger will encrypt using the key he generated here, mb. And this will give the challenger a ciphertext. The challenger will send this ciphertext to the adversary. So whatever is adversary's input except the state, we are providing it in the game here. And the adversary's outputs are provided to the challenger. So here M0, M1 were the outputs. Again, don't worry about the state here because the adversary is single. And this B prime is an output. So the adversary is going to send this B prime to the challenger. Okay? Or it is going to output, let's say. Remember, this is a game. We call that adversary wins if B prime is equal to B in this game. Now, if I want to redefine this whole probability, I can say for all PPT adversaries, there exists a negligible function on M such that probability that the adversary wins the game that we defined here needs to be equal to 1 over 2 plus negligible. If that's the case, then our encryption scheme is secure against an eavesdrop.